میں اس وقت قریباً پندرہ سال کا تھا چھبیس مئی انیس سو آٹھ کو صبح دس بجے قریب حسمتی موت کی وفات ہوئی اس وقت ہمارا گھر دنیوی مال ازر کے لحاظ سے بالکل خالی تھا اور یہ بات مجھے خود بھی مجمل طور پر یاد ہے کہ ہماری اما جان یعنی حضرت ام المومین رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ نے اس وقت کیا اس کے تھوڑی دیر بعد اپنے بچوں کو جمع کیا اور صبر کی تلقین کرتے ہوئے انہیں ان نہ بھولنے والے الفاظ میں نصیحت فرمائی کہ بچوں گھر خالی دے کر یہ نہ سمجھنا کہ تمہارے ابا تمہارے لیے کچھ نہیں چھوڑ گئے انہوں نے آسمان پر تمہارے لیے دونوں کا بڑا بھاری خزانہ چھوڑا ہے جو تمہیں وقت پر ملتا رہے گا Guardians and MDs have been shaken like never before. Grief-stricken, the community unites at the hand of Hazrat Hakim Nuruddin, radiyallahu anhu. He is elected as Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih, the promised Messiah of Islam's first successor. For most Ahmadis, Khilafat Ahmadiyya is a source of peace and security. But there is one discontented party who seek to undermine the institution of Khilafat. Senior office holders in the Anjuman, Khwaja Kamaluddin Sahib, Maulvi Muhammad Ali Sahib, shortly after the election of the first Khalifa, their endeavors were to get rid of this system of Khilafat and have the Anjuman be superior and the authoritative head of the community. They began to spread the idea somewhat uh, secretly amongst the people that there was no need for a Khalifa. Hazrat Sayyida Nawab Mubarak Begum Anha, immediately after the demise of Hazrat Musim Adal Salatu Salam, according to her, it was the third night. She was shown in a dream the courtyard of Hazrat Amma Jan's house in which there is a throne. And Hazrat Musim Adal Salatu Salam descended from the side where Hazrat uh, Ummi Jan Anha, the first wife of Hazrat Muslim Maud, used to live. He occupied that throne and stood on that throne. Just at that moment, the whole throne started trembling and shaking. But Hazrat Musim Adal Salatu was uh, standing without shaking. He was not affected in the least by the shaking throne on which he was standing. And then in an awe-inspiring voice, he said, tell my community that they should recite this prayer very often, repeatedly. Rabbana la tuzi qulubana abada iz hadaitana wahab lana min ladun ka rahma inna ka antal wahab. Then I woke up and she says that after a while I mentioned it to Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih Abwal. And she says that I saw such pain in, uh, in his eyes that I can never forget it all my life how deeply he was pained when I related this dream to him. Malvi Muhammad Ali Sahib and Khwaja Kamal Adin Sahib oppose Khilafat within the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Centering their activities in Lahore, their followers come to be known as the Lahori Jamaat. At the time of Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih Awal Razila Talanu, they did not have the courage to come forward. And their desire of not having a Khalifa and just having the Anjuman somehow got subdued and it didn't come to surface. But then as the health of Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih Awal Razila Talanu deteriorated and especially after his demise is when this actual mischief and issue came to surface. 
where the likes of Mali Muhammad Ali Saab and Khwaja Kamaluddin Saab and his associates, they uh, clearly declare that we do not need a Khalifa because all we need is an Anjuman. Maybe they thought, you know, it's just a young kid, you know, 24, 25 years of age and uh, it might just be easy to convince him. I went and told all the people of the people of Nawab Muhammad Ali Khan and Mi Bashir and our father and our father. I told them that the time of the people of the people of the people is very important. If we don't stay at this time, the result will be that the people of the people of the people will be saved. I told Mawri Sahib that I will give you a name and the people of the people of the people will be saved. They have done it. مگر میں پھر بھی سمجھتا ہوں کہ اب بھی اگر میں نام لے لوں اور آپ لوگ میری تائید میں ہوں سارے خاندان حضر مسیح محود کا تو لوگ ساری جماعت ادھر چلے جائیں اور میں نے یہی سمجھا ہوا تھا کہ میں کوشش یہ کروں گا کہ مولی محمد علی صاحب کے ہاتھ پر بیت کر دیں لیکن مدا تعالیٰ نے کام مجھ سے لینا تھا تو مولی محمد علی سے کس طرح کھڑے ہو جاتے نتیجہ یہ ہوا کہ جب میں وہاں پہنچا تو مجھے مولی محمد آسن صاحب مرہوم نے کہا کہ آپ ہاتھ بڑھائیے اور بیعت دیجئے پہلے تو مہارے محمد علی نے انکار کیا لیکن اس وقت کھڑے ہو گئے کہ اب میں تقریب کرتا ہوں میری بات بھی کوئی سن لیجئے تمام ہم نے شروع کیا ہم نہیں سننا چاہتے بیٹھ جاؤ بیٹھ جاؤ ہم نہیں سننا چاہتے تو چنانچہ جماعت نے بیعت میری کر لی اس کے بعد انہوں نے لاہور میں جا کے اپنی شروع 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 کر دی آجا کمال دین نے بار بار لکھا اگر تم مسلم موجود the split between those who pledge spiritual allegiance and those who oppose Khilafat now formally takes place. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih II's younger brother, Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed, is personally affected. There was one very eminent companion. His name was Khan Bahadur Maulvi Ghulam Hassan Khan Saab. He was a very devout MD and a very devout uh, Mubai to Promise Messiah Islam, who had an esteemed place for Promise Messiah Islam. He did that early in 1890. In 1890, he became an MD. And from that day onward, he became like a Muballik for Ahmadiyat in Peshawar. And Promised Messiah himself held him in so much regard then that when he was deciding for a bride for uh, his second son, Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmad Sahib, he decided to marry him to the daughter of Khan Bahadur Maulvi Ghulam Hassan Khan Sahib. When she got married, her father emphasized so much that uh, whenever Hazur Hazrat Masimah enters the room, you must stand up. Even to this extent that uh, when he goes back and he returns from the door and you have sat down, you will stand up again. And my grandmother told me that he emphasized and rubbed it to me so much that when Hazur entered my room, I was sitting on the charpai. I was so confused what to do. And she stood up on the charpai. Hazur smiled and went back again. <laughs> Promise Messiah Allah Islam laid the foundation of Sadar Anjuman. And he himself chose 14 members for Sadar Anjuman to be headed by Hazrat Malvi Nuruddin Radhiallahu and Hazrat Khalifa Masi Sani, then Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmood Ahmad was a member of it as well. But out of the 14 was also, uh, there was also a member and he was the father-in-law of Hazrat Mirza Bashir Radhiallahu which is Khan Bahadur Malvi Ghulam Hassan Khan Saab. So he held quite a high position in Jamaat. But unfortunately, in 1914, when there was a split in the Jamaat, he went along with the Lahori party. 
he was a high ranking holder of office in lahori jamaat ukar karte the ki main to gaur kiya mujhe to wohi anjuman wali thi ka baat dikhai deti hai isliye wo anjuman ka saath dete the aur bhi bahut se logon ko bicharon ke liye wo gumrahi ka mujhe ban gaya wo chhod baithe it was a great source of sorrow and anxiety not only for his daughter hazrat sarwar sultan begum but also for hazrat mirza bashir ahmed sahab razi allah taala anhu ye khas tar khas masina uski ghar mein paida hua aur ye khuda ki ek azim shaan nemat hai jiske shukri ke liye meri zuban mein taqat nahi balki haq ye hai ke mere dil mein is shukriye ke tasawur tak ki gunjaish nahi before his birth the promise sai alaihi salatu wasalam Uh, received a revelation although it's it's a long revelation in arabic language but it referred to the son that was going to be born as qamarul anbiya or the moon of the prophets apne bachon ki aaminon mein hasmasi maud ne khushusiyat ke sath apni aulaad ke liye is dard o sor aur is aawazari ke sath duaein ki hain ki main jab bhi unhe padhta hu to apne nafs mein sharminda ho kar khayal karta hu ye shayad hamari kamzoriyan to in gaon पंजाब कल्चर इट वॉज नॉट डिसरिस्पेक्टफुल सिचुएशन बट यू सी and sahaba used to object to it and i'm told that as uh, muslim allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to tell them that mujhe acha lagta hai i like this from him so don't stop him so abba jan told me that when i grew up the station of hazrat muslim allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his stature was known to me then there was so much of inhibition in me that i could never address him directly afterwards because he was so used to call him abatu abatu hmm? while those claiming to be the most learned scholars have abandoned khilafat ahmadiyya hazrat mirza bashir ahmed is proving himself a most loyal and obedient servant us mirza bashir ahmed sahab farmaya karte the ki main baad mamlaat mein अपनी राय रखता हूँ और अपनी तरफ से दलील के साथ खलीफतलमसी को अपनी राय पेश करता हूँ लेकिन अगर मेरी राय रद्द हो जाए तो कभी मुझे ख्याल भी नहीं आया कि क्यों ये रद्द हुई है फिर कामिल इतात के साथ उस हुक्म की बजावरी पर मैं लग जाता हूँ भाई तो थे मगर हजरत मामू जान हजरत मिर्जा बशीर अहमद बहुत अतात गुजार भाई से ज़्यादा वो खिलाफत का बहुत ज़्यादा करते थे अब्बा जान मियाँ बशीर अहमद साहब यूज टू टेक मी फॉर मगरब प्रेयर्स विद हिम एंड इन वेरिएबली आफ्टर मगरब प्रेयर्स ही वुड गो टू हजरत मुस्लिम आउद टू सीक इज गाइडेंस अब्बा जान ही सो रिस्पेक्टेड अदरवाइज बट एट द सेम टाइम वेन ही यूज टू गो टू मीट हजरत मुस्लिम आउद he would sit on the floor and when he is in presence of a muslim maud he would not even raise his eyes and just keep on listening to him so his love for a muslim maud was immense hazrat muslim maud razi allah taala and who loved his children so dearly children of his brother hazrat bashir ahmed that he he would feel that fatherly responsibility towards them there was a rumor at some point that hazrat bazadi amtu salam begum sahib's husband was going to do something that may cause her great distress and when that rumor reached hazrat muslim al razi allah taala anhu he was very upset he couldn't sleep the whole night and he was upset and he was angry because he said that the decision of um salam's marriage uh bashir has totally given to me he said that hazm is a bashir ahmed has it has given the total decision power of whom she marries to hazrat muslim out and 
Hazrat Mustamad Razila Talan, who also felt that responsibility, and he said, he said, he sent a message to her husband saying that don't think that she is without a father. Essentially saying that she had had a Muslim It showed his absolute obedience that even for such a personal thing, deciding who his children was going to get married, he gave that decision power to Hazrat Muslim Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed Sahib who writes on one occasion uh, whilst comparing the temperaments of the, the three brothers, the three sons of the promised Messiah wasalam, and he says that on one end of the spectrum, you had our elder brother, Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed Sahib, who had a jalal to his personality, very majestic, very strong. Anybody who was with him in the room knew that he was the strongest man in that room. And that was according to the prophecies of the promised Messiah But our brother Mirza Sharif Ahmed Sahib was the most balanced of us three brothers. And then on the other end, you had me, as it Mirza Bashir Ahmed Sahib says, that I was always a soft, gentle person. And so soft that people would say that I was weak. Hazrat Nawab Mubarak Begum Sahib narrates explaining the love of Promised Messiah for his community. The Promised Messiah was both a father and a mother for his community. After Promised Messiah passed away, in her opinion, that role was taken on by both his eldest sons. While Hazrat Muslim al Anhu was like a father of the community of Promised Messiah he loved them dearly, but it was also his responsibility to look after their moral training and to keep an eye on their moral training. And if it required uh, him being reserved like a father or um, guiding people in the right path, he would do so. Um, in a similar way, Hazrat Mizah Bashir Ahmed, she said, took on a role of a mother and he would, like a mother, uh, very kindly and with love and compassion guide the community. One person to observe the personalities of both Hazrat Khalif al II and Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed will be their nephew, Sahib Zada Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Ammu Sahib ne ka khat diya. Wo kisi ki maafi ka tha ke ye huzur aisi galati nahi hai, huzur naraz hai to isko. Ke kisi ko maaf karne ke liye tha. कहते मैं छोटा मतलब था अभी 15 16 साल की उम्र होगी कि तुम ये ले जाओ कहते कि मैंने कहा कि मुझे डर लगता है कहते क्या होगा हजरत मुस्लिम वो डांट देंगे ना तो कोई बात नहीं है डांट खा के आ जान अच्छा ये लेके गए वो तो अब्बा जूर को दिया उन्होंने अम्मू सब का खत और दोनों भाइयों में खतो किताब हो रही थी ये तो बीच में कासिद बने हुए थे ना ले लाने ले जाने वाले खलीफा तो मसीह सानी तजरताला उन्होंने खूब डांट डांट तो वो थे अम्मू साहब को रहे थे लेकिन सुन ये रहे थे ये फिर आए के उन्होंने कहा क्यों उन्होंने छत झुका के दे दिया वो के जी वो उन्होंने ये कहा फिर उन्होंने लिख के दे दिया कि लो ये फिर लेके जाओ कहते फिर मैं डांट खा के आ गया अब अम्मू साहब का हजरत मिर्ज़ा बशीर अहमद साहब का भी ये था कि वो जो समझते थे कि बात में मतलब ऐसी वो नहीं है तो अम्मू साहब बात अपनी पूरी करते रहते थे लोगों की भलाई के लिए भी और वो भी फिर भी गया फिर ये डांट खा के आ गया मेरा ख्याल दो या तीन दफ़ा ये हुआ फिर आखिर Hazrat Khalif al Masih II proves a most loving guardian for all his siblings, including youngest brother Hazrat Mirza Sharif Ahmed. Chote Mamujan ka ye tha ke unse koi bhi zarurat band agar aata tha, to chote Mamujan hamesha uski zarurat puri karte the. Aur jitne bhi paise ho. वो ये नहीं देखते थे कि मेरे पास कितने हैं या कम हैं या जरूरत पड़ सकती है वो बहुत फराख दिली से दे देते थे मजले मामू जान हजरत मिर्ज़ा बशीर अहमद साहब ने हजरत मुस्लिम को शिकायत की कि मियां शरीफ को जरा समझाएं ये 
خرچ میں شاید زیادہ کر رہے ہیں ایسے نہ ہو کہ اپنی یہ ساری جائیداد جو ہے یہ ختم کر دیں بڑے ماں مجن نے کہا تو میاں بشیر میں اور آپ کس لیے ہیں یعنی یہ دیکھیں کہ ایک بھائی جو ہے وہ یہ پوری طرح یہ ذمہ واری لے رہا ہے کہ اگر ہمارا چھوٹے بھائی کو کبھی ضرورت پڑی تو یہ ہمارا فرض ہوگا کہ ہم اس کا خیال رکھیں حضرت مولانا عبد الرحیم درد صاحب رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ہیز نریٹیڈ ہی واز ود حضرت مرزا بشیر احمد صاحب رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ اینڈ ود حضرت مرزا شریف احمد صاحب رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ایز ویل ان ون آف دا رومز آف دار المسیح آن دا گراؤنڈ فلور ان دیر ارلی ڈیز آف دیر یوتھ اینڈ دے واز سٹنگ ان اے روم اینڈ مے بی پلیئنگ سم تھنگ اور انجوائنگ سم تھنگ اینڈ لافنگ اباؤٹ اٹ اینڈ ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم دا ڈور اوپن اینڈ حضرت مسلم عبد رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کیم ڈاؤن ٹو ہیو اے لک واٹ واز گوئنگ آن It was after this that his Muslim author wrote that great poetic verse which is very common and every MD, Tifl and Khadim especially know it that None ha lane jamaat mujhe kuch kehna hai Ye shart ke zaye mera pega حضرت صاحب جس کام میں تفصیل کے ساتھ جانے کی ضرورت ہوتی تھی اور حضرت صاحب کی مصروفیات اس کی اجازت نہیں دیتی تھی تو وہ پھر کام پڑتا تھا کہ ہم یہ مشیر امسا پر دا لائف اینڈ کیریکٹر آف دا سیل آف پروفیٹس اور سیرت خاتم النبیین از اے میگنیفیسنٹ ورک آف حضرت مرزا بشیر احمد صاحب ایٹ دا ٹائم ہی واز اباؤٹ ٹوینٹی فائیو ایئرز آف ایج سو اے ویری یگ مین ہم سیلف وین ہی بیگین رائٹنگ دیز آرٹیکلس وچ دین بیکیم دا فرسٹ والیوم آف ہز میگنم اوپس But despite that, if you read that book, you will be astounded at the magnificent manner in which he has put this work together. And Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih II mentioned on one occasion that this book by Mirza Bashir Ahmed Saib is the best seerat, the best work of history written on the life of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wrote this book extremely in a scholarly way. very big book and he started from the early history of Arabia then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then he took all the things a masterpiece and a very scholarly contribution and he wrote just like his experience most experienced historian Allah the Almighty really gave him a gift and that gift was a gift of storytelling and I have never seen a book so beautifully written and a story so magnificently told as in this book by Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed Sahib. It's just unbelievable. When you read those events, you are overcome with emotion because you feel like you are there seeing that story with your own eyes. And also he got the blessed opportunity to compile Siratul Mahdi, which is a biographical account of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So the fact that he was to put together biographies of these two great prophets of God. So, the moon of the prophets. Because he was able to tell the world about these two great prophets. His is not an empty theoretical scholarship. Rather, Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed enjoys a personal relationship with Allah the Almighty. In prayer, he used to be completely lost as if he is in the presence of Allah Almighty. In all the humble ways, he used to pray. That is something which always touched the hearts of all those people who looked at him. And I count myself as one of them. During Qadian days, it, it came that uh, Abba Jan was not well. And Due to his uh, illness, he was not able to go to the mosque for a few days, at least for Fajr prayers. At the Fajr time, he would be woken up by somebody shaking his toe. And when he looked down, there was no one. He said that I had a Fajr time for Fajr. So I had a Fajr time. پاؤں کا انگوٹھا کسی نے ہلایا ایسے کر کے جیسے اٹھانے کے لیے لاتا ہے تو کہتے میں نے کہا کہ دیکھو اگر تم ڈرانے آئے ہو تو میں نہیں ڈرتا لیکن اگر جگانے آئے ہو تو میں تمہیں بتا دوں کہ میں بیمار تھا 
میں چند دن نہیں جا سکا میں آج جا رہا ہوں نماز پڑھنے فجر کی مسجد میں روز صبح جاتے تھے فجر کی نماز پڑھنے میں نے پوچھا تھا کہ آپ کو الہام ہوتا ہے کرانے کے لیے مجھے کہنے لگے کہ مولوی عبدالدی صاحب سے تو پوچھ رہے ان کو میں کہ نہیں آپ کو پوچھ رہا ہوں آپ کو پوچھ رہا ہوں لیکن اس وقت تو جو اب نہیں گیا کئی دن کے بعد میں گیا ام صاحب کے پاس تو اس وقت اپنے بات ذکر کیا کہ میرے ایک دفعہ میں میرا پرچہ خراب ہوا تھا تو مجھے السلام علیکم کی آواز آئی اس طرح کی ون سن قادیان عزت مرزا بشیر احمد صاحب رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ واز ان ہز نارمل ریسیٹیشن آف ہولی قرآن واز پونڈرنگ اوور دی آیت آف قرآن بغیر حساب وچ مینس ود آؤٹ اینی میجر اور ود آؤٹ اکاؤنٹیبلٹی اینڈ ان پونڈرنگ اٹ he for a moment he thought and asked as if asking god whether i'll be one of the person who will be among people who are given a measure baghair e hisab bhajan ke kamre mein main gayi hu us waqt bhi bhi yahi hongi koi 7 8 saal ki to ab bhajan quran sharif khol ke baithe hain aur thode se pareshan se lag rahe hain تو میں ان سے کہتی ہوں کہ ابا جان آپ کیوں پریشان ہیں تو کہتے ہیں کہ میں نے جب اس آیت پہ پہنچا کہ جو فلاں فلاں بندہ جو ہے وہ بغیر حساب کے اللہ میاں جنت میں داخل کرے گا تو میرے دیکھتے دیکھتے قرآن شریف کے دونوں ورق سفید ہو گئے اور اس پہ موٹا موٹا لکھا ہوا تھا بغیر حساب By now, a quarter of a century has passed since the split between those who accepted and those who opposed Khilafat Ahmadiyya. In all those years, there is one mistaken companion Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmad has never stopped praying for. In his book, Silsilah Ahmadiyya, he has listed the 14 founding members of Anjanmun Ahmadiyya. And against the name of Khan Sahib, uh, uh, Khan Bahadur Mawli Ghulam Hassan Khan Sahib, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anho, he's mentioned that this gentleman is the father-in-law of the writer of the book, and he's opposed to Khilafat. But he indulges the reader that please pray that he should see the light and be guided to accept the right path and do bath of Khalifa. So this shows the effort and the prayers that Hazrat Mizar Bashir Ahmad Sahib Razi Allah Ta'ala Anho kept on doing for his father-in-law. And he always made efforts and tried to remain in contact, wrote to him, trying to convince him. Maulvi Ghulam Hassan Khan Sahib was invited to attend the Jalsa Salana. And it was uh, a, a unique Jalsa Salana because it was the 25 years Jubilee of Khilafat. And what he witnessed on that Jalsa opened his eyes. So he himself writes in Al-Fazl, When I came to Jalsa Salana, I was assured that Lahori Jamaat in 26 years not only has just been stagnant at what it was 26 years ago, but in fact has deteriorated. But the Jamaat that I left which was insignificant in my eyes, has conquered frontiers and progress by leaps and bounds, so much so that it has eclipsed what Lahori Jamaat is today. It's so far ahead that we always believed there will be a Muslim out, and we always believed what sort of jobs will he do. And the jobs that Hazrat Khalifa Masih Sani has done are definitely those jobs which a Muslim was expected to do. Now one should bear in mind it was 1940. Hazrat Khalifa Masih Sani has not even claimed to be a Muslim out at that time. So Khan Bahadur Maulvi Ghulam Hassan Khan Sahib Razi Allah Ta'ala Anho did bath. But because they were the same, the Anjuman, the word of the Anjuman, they would understand that this is the Anjuman, the Lahori Jamaat, the Anjuman Murad. مگر کس بات نے ان کو ہدایت دی وہ یہی تھی آخر پر وہ آئے اور بیت کر لی 
اپنے عقیدے کے خلاف کیسے بیعت کی جب ان سے پوچھا گیا تو انہوں نے کہا کہ میں خدا کے سلوک کا کیا کروں یہ جو اللہ کی تقدیر ہے مدد ان کی کر رہا ہے جو غلط ہوں اور ان کو ہر میدان میں زک پہنچا رہا ہے تو اس تقدیر الہی کا کیا کروں میرے دماغ کی غلطی ہے کوئی جس کو میں پکڑ نہیں سکا مگر اللہ کی فیلی شہادت گواہی دے رہی ہے حضرت مرزا بشیر احمد صاحب رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ہی ہیز آلسو پبلش اے لیٹر تھینکنگ دی پیپل آف جماعت دیٹ وی آر ریسیونگ لیٹر لیفٹ رائٹ اینڈ سینٹر فرام جماعت کنگریچولیٹنگ اس اینڈ ہیز ریلیف کین بی فیلڈ فرام دیٹ لیٹر مائی مدر سیز دیٹ شی واز یگ اینڈ شی ریمبرس دیٹ خان بہادر صاحب یوز ٹو حضرت مرزا بشیر احمد صاحب مسٹ ہیو انوائٹیڈ ہم so he started living at darul masi uh, with hazrat abba jan hazrat mirza bashir ahmed sahab radhiyallahu anhu taala no and she said i remember him that he lived there for quite a lot of years as a content and happy man and hazrat mirza bashir ahmed sahab must have been also quite happy and pleased that after 26 years his father in law has come to do the bath of the khalifa and come to the right path مائی فادر سید محمد احمد کوڈ ناٹ گیٹ ان ٹو این انجینئرنگ کالج اینڈ مائی گرینڈ فادر حضرت میر محمد اسماعیل صاحب رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ویری مچ وانٹیڈ ہم ٹو بی سکسیزفل ان گیٹنگ دا ایڈمیشن سو وین ہی کوڈ ناٹ مائی گرینڈ فادر واز ناٹ ویری ہیپی بٹ ہی واز ڈبلی ڈسپلیزڈ بیکاز ہی گاٹ ہم سیلف ایڈمیٹیڈ ٹو رائل انڈین ایئر فورس ایز اے پائلٹ اینڈ ہی واز سو ڈسپلیز دیٹ وین مائی فادر واز کال ٹو گو آن دا فرنٹ ہی ڈڈ ناٹ کم ٹو بیٹ ہم فیئر ویل سو مائی فادر سیز دیٹ آئی واز سٹنگ ان دس ٹرین ان اے ویری سیڈ اینڈ لونلی موڈ and i was thinking that i am going to the front to fight a war and i don't know whether i will come back or not whether i will survive it or not and there is no one from my family or no one from my relatives who has come to uh, bid farewell to me and he said that why i was in this sad and grieved mood and sitting lonely in the train i saw two people angel like people walking towards me and it was hazrat mirza bashir ahmed sahab razi allah taala anhu and his wife hazrat uh, sarwar sultan begum razi allah taala anha and both of them came and said we've come to say you farewell because he knew he quite well understood that this young boy of 18 and 19 years old is going on his own to fight a war and he would like somebody to say him farewell my father says that this generous deed or act of hazrat mirza bashir himself has always remained in his mind and he's always been grateful for it arbitration of india's political problems still remains unsolved hazrat mirza bashir ahmed sahib mentions uh, that I was reflecting over certain revelations and prophecies of the promised Messiah alayhi salatu was salam. Uh, around the n- late 1930s, it came to me that a time would come when the community would have to leave its headquarters in Qadiyan and uh, move somewhere else, migrate. And he says that I wrote this to Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih II. Hazrat Muslim Audr wrote back to Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed Sahib and said, you have realized this now. I have been saying this for the last 10 years that a time would come when we would perhaps have to leave Qadiyan. So on one hand, you had Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed Sahib who was 10 years ahead of what people could understand at that time. And then you had his elder brother, Hazrat Muslim Ahmed Sahib 
who was 20 years before his time. 1947, when Pakistan became an independent nation of more than 70 million. The condition during the partition was very difficult. It was unsafe. Lots of fighting was happening, as it is written in history books as well. Everybody was in danger. I actually don't agree with saying only Muslims were in danger or Hindus or Sikhs. I think everybody was uncertain. Everybody was in great danger from one another, which it was a very, very unfortunate episode of history. Fadian in 1947, at the time of the disturbances, the numerous refugees entered the town at the time of partition, when disturbances were going on all around the town. I would like to quote here Anne-Marie Schimmel, who is a great researcher of the history of the Indian subcontinent. She has uh, acknowledged this fact in her book, um, uh, one of her books, in, in Islam in the Indian Subcontinent. She says that Qadian played the role of a sanctuary for the Muslims of the Punjab. So it wasn't only Ahmadis that jamaat e in Qadian under the leadership of Hazmiz Abishir and Sabr Zatalano, and obviously under the instructions of Hazrat Muslim Maud Zatalano, that they were providing a shelter for. Hazrat Muslim Maud Zatalano mentions that uh, during this time, uh, a captain who was stationed in Batala, a British captain, he came and he met me and he was very emotional, very overcome by emotion and he said that uh, they are going to start targeting Qadian. Hazrat Muslim mentions that as danger increased uh, and the threat of an attack upon Qadian increased, um, I initially thought that I would remain here and become a martyr in the way of Allah the Almighty. I would not leave Qadian. So he said I was ready to give my life in Qadian. But when I reflected over uh, various revelations of the Promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, I realized it was destined, it was decreed by Allah the Almighty that we would have to leave Qadian. In those circumstances, it came to such an extent that this is an incident narrated by my uncle Mirza Majid Ahmad. Hazrat Khalifa Masisani wrote a letter because so much of the Jamaat had already migrated and they were in Lahore and um, so much of the workers had gone over there as well. So he wrote a letter to them as his will, stating in that, that if something happens to me, then Hazrat Mirza Bashir Masab, Anhu, should take over the leadership of the Jamaat till the time a new Khalifa is elected. So it was something that he had taken into account there could be that there is a threat to my life and something might happen to me. When it became clear, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih must migrate from Qadian to the newly formed Pakistan, attempts were made to secure uh, transportation, of course. Uh, the main responsibility for securing this transportation was in the hands of Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed Sahib. An attempt was made to seek the assistance of the Pakistani government at that time. They didn't respond for many days. And when after 10, 11 days they responded, they said that no safe transportation can be arranged from our end. My uncle, Mirza Muzaffar Masab, he mentions that during those days, we could see Hazrat Khalifa Masisani would go into Bayt al-Dua and spend hours and hours prayers over there. And when he would come out, his eyes would be red and swollen. And this was very difficult for Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed Sahib because he had on his shoulders this huge responsibility of arranging transportation for the Khalifa of the time. In a state of such danger, and all of these efforts were being frustrated, on one occasion, Hazrat Muslim Maud uh, called Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed Sahib and consoled him, comforted him and said that uh, my attention has been drawn to a revelation of the Promised Messiah alayhi salatu was salam, Baad Gyara inshallah, that after 11, uh, God willing. So not to worry, uh, I know that after 11, uh, 
this transportation will be arranged. And then at 11.05, Captain Ataullah Sahib came from Lahore with some cars to pick up Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih and take him to the newly formed Pakistan. He left behind Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ansar as in charge of the affairs. And when we say in charge of the affairs, Qadian was in great danger. It was a state of chaos where nobody actually knew what was going on. So, you know, it was uncertainty if we, you know, want to use one word for the whole of the situation. It was a great, it was a time of great uncertainty. The limited number of Ahmadis who were left in Qadian, from all four sides, they were surrounded by hostile people. The people who would be after your life and would be after everything you own. They rushed into the houses of the head of the movement and of his brothers. Everything was ripped open, locks were broken, searched the women's apartments. Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed remains in Qadian. But those who have already departed long for the holy town. Hazrat Amma Jan said that Promised Messiah said to her that she would face three trials in her life. The first one was the passing away of Hazrat Mizam Mubarak Ahmed. As we know that he passed away at a very young age, he was eight years old. And the second, obviously, big trial was passing away from Sri Sayyala She didn't know what the third trial was going to be. But when partition happened and the migration happened from Qadian to Pakistan, that was the third trial because it was quite a big thing for Hazrat Amma Jan Ta'ala Anha to leave Qadian and to leave the blessed grave of Prophet Messiah Islam and their home and everything. And she was quite distraught because of that. Hazrat Amma Jan Ta'ala Anha used to say to Hazrat Muslim Aud Ta'ala Anho that you must take me back to Qadian to get me buried next to Prophet Messiah Islam. And he would obviously get tearful and walk away. Or us gadi ke liye jaan betaab hai jab ye awara gardi khatam ho aur khuda hume aaj yaan mein khairiye se pohncha de Amin aur hamare jism Hazrat Masih Maud Allah Salat wa Salam ke jism ke qareeb mitri mein dafar Hazrat Amma Jan Razila Talanu, Umbul Mominin, of course, loved all her children. But she had a very special and kind, soft space for her second son, Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmad Razila Talanu. Now, it could be because of the nature of Mirza Bashir Amasab which was very soft itself and very kind and loving, whatever may be the reason. But uh, Hazrat Amma Jan always, instead of calling him Bashir, used to call him Bushra and used to say, My Bushra. But Hazrat Mirza Bashir Amasab was left behind on the direction of Hazrat Khalifa Masisani. So this played on Hazrat Amajan's mind and although she wouldn't say it, but Hazrat Khalifa Masih very much understood what is going on in the heart of Hazrat Amajan because of Bushra being in Qadian. So when the job was done, Hazrat Khalifa Masih Sani asked Hazrat Mirza Bashir Masih to come to Lahore. 
और इस तरह कमरा था मामू जान का इस तरह मम्मी का था और बार बार झाँक रहे होते थे कि खादियान से काफला आना होता था और हाथ में कुरान होता था बेताब हो के टहल रहे होते थे तो जब आ जाता था काफला आ जाता था सजदा शुक्र करते तो मैंने खुद देखा कि हजर मिर्जा बशीर मसाब रजी तेम सेफली टू लाहौर इमीजिएटली हजर खलीफा मसीसा ने इमीजिएटली हेल्ड हिम बाय हिज आम एंड टुक हिम टू हजरत अमा जान एंड सेट टू हजरत अमा जान अमा जान लुक आई ब्रॉट योर बुशरा द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट सिटी ऑफ दिस रीजन इज कॉल्ड लाहौर एन एंशंट ट्रेडिंग सेंटर वन सराउंडेड बाय थिक वॉल्स टूडे दिस सिटी हैज ग्रोन बियॉन्ड द एंशंट गेट्स हजरत मिर्जा बशीर अहमद हैज अराइव्ड सेफली इन लाहौर बट हियर he faces a new family ordeal one of his daughters has recently married hazrat muslim al son mamu jan ne bheja meri bhabhi ko ke hadith mein hai ke poocho ladki se ke khush ho mamu bheja to majan ne to mamu jan ne kaha aage ko ye tumhare se baat na suno hai abba jan was very reluctant to to communicate with the muslim maud because he had an ultimate respect for the khalifa waqt he didn't want to even utter that reality with one thing in mind that it may hurt azur mamu jan kehte the uske abba ke maine main azur khalifa sani ko nahi keh sakta तो फिर एक दिन काफ़ी अरसे के बाद हजर खलीफा सानी ने मौजन को बुलाया कि मैंने सुना है कि तुम्हें पसंद नहीं है तो मौजू ने कहा हजर खलीफा साना ने खुद करवाई तो डाइवोर्स वॉज अरेंज हजरत अब्बा जान रिटर्न एवरी थिंग विच वॉज गिवन टू हर टू हजरत मुस्लिम आउट and he immediately returned it back that it is for her and it will remain with her naturally he was very worried about her marriage again one ramadan he prayed so he said that i put a sort of a condition for qabuliyat dua that uh, i will not arrange for iftari if my dua is accepted by god it will always be sent to me by someone for complete one month ramzan so this abajan told me himself that it was a last roza and on the lord speaking in those days the azan was allowed uh, the speaker testing was there and there was no one and i i was very worried that now the azan will be there and nobody has sent me any iftari he said uh, before i could listen to allahu akbar there was a knock out side and somebody came and said this is for you so he said that i i was confident that my prayers for my daughter has been accepted nishta kis tarah hua tha bhai ki zuban akele hum di the वो मामू जान को लिखते थे कि अपने मेरे ससुर को कि मैंने ख्वाब में देखा कि मेरा रिश्ता ऐसी जगह हो जिस लड़की को तलाक हुई है उससे रिश्ता दो मैंने ख्वाब में देखा है कि आपकी बेटी जब निकाह हुआ ना मौजन को मामू जान ने कहा कि तुम जाके मिला लाओ मैं लेके गई हूँ तो सिर्फ आसानी पास तो मौजन का हाथ पकड़ के बड़ा प्यार किया वो किया कि मैं नाराज नहीं हूँ और बहुत दुआ करता हूँ बाहर के पाकिस्तान बाय द नाइनटीन सिक्सटीज The town is well established as the Amdia Muslim community's new headquarters. 
here, the three sons of Hazrat the Majan have reached their elder years. Hazrat Mirza Sharif Ahmed is the first to return to his creator. The news spread all over and everybody started coming over. And Hazrat Abhajan, addressing my mother, he said that we should all now pray for Hazrat Muslim Aud because when a mala, I mean a string, when it uh, breaks, the other associated uh, beads, they start falling away. So we must pray for him. I remember a moment at that time that the big people were standing on the side of the side of the side of the side. اور امو صاحب داخل ہوئے ہیں بعد میں کمرے میں حضر مرزا بشیر احمد صاحب تو بڑی پھپی جان نے آگے بڑھ کے امو صاحب کے گلے لگی ہیں صرف ایک فکرہ کہا ہے کہ مجلب بھائی اب ہم چار رہ گئے جب گزر جائیں گے ہم تم پہ پڑے گا سب بار جب گزر جا لیکن اس کے بعد جب امو صاحب اطلاع دینے گئے ہیں صاحب کو تو اس وقت میں میں وہاں کھڑا تھا امو صاحب خود حرکت میں آگئے لیکن صاحب اسی طرح کے اچھا بات ہوئی بلکل حوصلہ صاحب کو ملے گا and that happened just one day before جلسہ سلانہ this was something very extremely sorrowful for the whole community that جلسہ celebrations are there people are coming in thousands upon thousands from all parts of the Pakistan and even from abroad and everywhere happiness, joy, thrill is there and suddenly one day before Hazrat Mirza Sharif Amsa passed away and everybody was very gloomy, very grief stricken and this is the first such incident of the demise of the son of the promised Messiah which took place around that time. Next day was Jalsa, people were thinking and everybody was saying how is going to be the atmosphere of Chalsa in such a sadness? Sabzada Mirza Bashir Ahmad Razi Allah Ta'ala He used to deliver the inaugural speech of Jalsa Salana Rabwa. So before the, his inaugural speech of Jalsa Salana, he stood up and announced that today four of us are left, referring about Hazrat Masima Allah's children. So Hazrat Muslim Ahmad was not well, so everybody naturally thought that about Hazrat Muslim Ahmad and a wave of silence and a shock you could see spreading over the whole Jalsaga. It was filled to capacity and everybody stood up. So Hazrat Abba Jan raised his hand and he said that Aap log sab baith jayein. یہ خدائی کافلہ ہے اس کو میری اور آپ کی وفات نہیں روک سکتی یہ بڑھتا چلا جائے گا that جلسہ سلانہ is a divine movement and it will continue and mine or your death will not stop it there was a feeling of emotions in his words like the ointment is put on the wound of the person just like that his speech and his delivery and his message and the consolation which he gave to the member on that day, that was something which uh, consoled the hearts of all the members of the community. That is one, my spiritual experience uh, with the speech of Hadrat Mirza Bashir Ahmad Now, Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed must battle his own health concerns. The Bajan was not well, and uh, I was sitting with him. Hazrat Bajan was lying on the bed, reading something. A phone rang, so I picked up uh, the phone and I said, Assalamu alaikum. Khan bol rahe to. He said, Mirza Mahmood Ahmed. And I could not recollect, so I said, Mirza Mahmood Ahmed Khan. So, Hazrat Abba Jan got up and he said, Lohalawala Kuwata Allah. 
and he took the phone and talked to his sub and um, that was the first time i realized that uh, both hazrat bajan and muslim out they talked to each other in punjabi um, i was not um, able to listen to hazur's voice but hazrat bajan told him that yes most welcome you can come over and then after a little while there was a knock outside uh, the door so i went out Uh, Hazur was there, uh, so naturally I said, "Come over." He said, "No, just go and inform Mia Sab, Mia Bashir." So I came in, and he said, "Hazur says that he wants to come in." He said, "Why don't you call him?" And I said, "No." He said that first inform. So the Tabajan asked me to give his turban, so he put his turban on. Azur came in. I drew a an easy chair. They sat down and started talking in Punjabi with each other. We kept on sitting there for almost an hour, but the conversation was uh, in Punjabi, and both of them addressed each other with the word "tusi," uh, like you say in Pun- Urdu "ap." Hmm? So he would call him "tusi," and Azat Abajan would call him "tusi." हजूर बीमार भी थे कुछ उन दोनों में तो हजरत मियाँ बशीर अहमद साहब रजील को भी बुलवा लिया अपने पास चंद दिन वो भी आकर रहे तो खाने के ऊपर दोपहर के खाने के ऊपर बुरामदे में ही मेरे लगते थे वहाँ ही सब खुद भी बैठते थे अमू साहब भी बैठते थे दूसरे अजीज भी बैठते थे हज साहब की और मियाँ बशीर अहमद साहब रजान की आपस में गुफ्तु शुरू हो जाती थी और हमारे बाकी अजीज आहिस्ता आहिस्ता एक एक करके उठना शुरू होते थे वो आखिर में मैं और बीबी रह जाते थे बल्कि कभी बीबी भी चली जाती मैं यूँ करके बैठ सकता यूँ आसा वहाँ मुझे बैठे सामने और मैं इस कोने में चुप करके बैठो अदब के साथ और बातें कर रहे हैं और कराची से लेकर पशावर तक बल्कि शायद इंग्लिस्तान से इंग्लिस्तान से लेकर अमरीका तक हर ख़ानदान को जानते हैं दोनों By 1962, Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed is fighting a serious heart condition. Physicians advise he is overworked and must take complete rest. However, he remains devoted to Hazrat Muslim Aud, the sister of Hazrat Khalifa Masih Rabi Rahimullah Taala, Amtul Basit. She had a complication in her liver, due to which. Uh, there was a concern for the life of the mother as well as of the child as well. As a Mr. Bashir Ahmed Sahab was close to 70 years old then, and he had been advised to take rest because of illness, because of his condition. So, as a Mr. Bashir Ahmed Sahab was ill at Alan Ho, he would come to Antal Basir Sahib's house while she was in labour. He would be strolling outside. a room in veranda in that heat and it was the time of may which is the peak time of summers in pakistan praying for her or praying all the time and he would only leave for prayers and then come back again and he kept on doing it day after day for 3 days till the time the baby was born healthily and both mother and the child was fine As his illness progresses, Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmed returns once more to Lahore. During his last uh, few days, we, he was semi-unconscious uh, with very high fever. Uh, I used to be by his side at 23 Race Course Road, Lahore. So that was the first time ever. I heard this from him. Never before I have heard this expression. He number of times called Abba, Abba, and um, it was very disturbing for all of us because everybody said that why 
Hmm? Uh, suddenly he started doing that. And especially few hours before his death, though his voice had weakened a lot, uh, but you could um, see from his lips and if you come close to her that he's calling Abba, Abba, many times over. تمہارے ابا تمہارے لیے کچھ نہیں چھوڑ گئے انہوں نے آسمان پر تمہارے لیے دونوں کا بڑا بھاری خزانہ چھوڑا ہے جو تمہیں وقت پر ملتا رہے گا یہ کوئی معمولی رسمی تسلی نہیں تھی جو انتہائی پریشانی کے وقت میں غم رسیدہ بچوں کو ان کی والدہ کی طرف سے دی گئی بلکہ یہ ایک خدائی آواز تھی اور رسمتی موت کے شاندار ارام کی گونج تھی کہ ارے اللہ بکا اور پھر اس وقت سے لے کر آج تک حضرت مسیح محمود علیہ السلام کی دعاؤں نے ہمارا اس طرح ساتھ دیا ہے اور اللہ کا فضل اس طرح ہمارے ساتھ حاضر رہا ہے کہ اس کے متعلق میں حسمتی محمود کے ان الفاظ میں صرف یہی کہہ سکتا ہوں کہ اگر ہر بال ہو جائے تو خندر تو پھر بھی شکر ہے ان کا انتظار اور میں یقین رکھتا ہوں کہ اگر حسمتی محمود علیہ السلام کی نظر نیکی اور تقوا اور اخلاق اور خدمت دین کے مقام پر قائم رہے گی تو حضور کی درد مندان دعائیں جن کا ایک بہت بھاری خزانہ آسمان پر جمع ہے قیامت تک ہمارا ساتھ دیتی چلی جائیں گی خدا کرے کہ ہم ہمیشہ نیکی اور دینداری کے رستے پر قائم رہیں اور دنیا سے ہماری واپسی کا وقت آئے تو حضرت مسیح محمود علیہ السلام اور حضرت اما جان رضی اللہ عنہ کی روحیں ہمیں دیکھ کر خوش ہوں کہ ہمارے بچوں نے ہمارے باپ اپنے آسمانی آقا کا دام نہیں چھوڑا اور ہم سب خدا کے رضو سرخ رو ہو کر پہنچے آمین یا رب ہمیں اس یار سے تک آتا ہے نج ہم سے کے احسان خدا ہے ہمیں اس یار سے تک آتا ہے مجھے تک سے اس نے یہ جزا دی فصبہ نلزی اخزل آدی فصبہ نلزی اخزل آدی